guys, Mr. Klein here with our first and only lesson on heat. We're going to be talking about the three types of heat transfer, as well as what exactly is heat and the difference between thermal energy and temperature. So let's go ahead and get started. It's Easter, Easter season. Everybody loves chocolate bunnies and everybody hates the hollow feeling of whenever you bite into a deliciously sweet chocolate bunny and find out it's hollow, as you can see right here. But there's one thing we love to do with Easter bunnies, and that is putting them in front of a hairdryer and melting them. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this chapter and in this lesson. We're going to be talking about heat transfer and what happens when things melt and stuff like that and the actual transfer of energy itself. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, whenever you remember from previous chapters on matter, we talked about the states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, and how the uh, what state of matter an object is in depends on of the amount of movement of the particles. And that has to do with its temperature and its heat and stuff like that. Okay, now remember, thermal energy is the total amount of motion of the particles in an object. Solids have the least amount of motion. Gases have the most amount of motion. Now what this means is that the total amount of energy, thermal energy, is directly related to its mass, okay? Which sound makes sense when you think about it. The more particles that are moving, the more thermal energy it has because there's more particles bouncing into each other creating, you know, thermal energy. But it creates some really odd things when you think about it at the same time. For example, which has more thermal energy, a ginormous iceberg or a match on fire? Well, actually, the iceberg has more thermal energy than the match, which you're like, huh? Well, the reason why is this. The iceberg has more thermal energy because the iceberg has more mass. So there's plenty more particles bouncing into each other, creating heat. As a result, it's got more thermal energy. Now, what we normally think of as thermal energy is heat, you know, like what we talk about. And it's the average particle movement. The answer is different. Whenever we talk about temperature, what we're actually talking about is the average motion of all the particles. So, for instance, our iceberg might have a whole lot of thermal energy, but it's only because it's got so much mass and the individual particles themselves aren't moving that much. The burning match, on the other hand, isn't really having a lot of total thermal energy, but because the particles are moving so much, its average is much higher, and as a result, it has a higher temperature. And of course, in science, the temperature scale we use is the SI, or metric unit, which is Celsius, or by extension, Kelvin, the measure of absolute temperature, and then there's that bad F word, Fahrenheit. We, we, we don't really use that in science, though. But that's the measurements of temperature. So let's go ahead and let's create our graphic organizer. Uh, we're, we're talking about thermal energy. It's the total movement of particles in an object, and related to it is the concept of temperature, which is the average movement of particles in an object. So I'm going to give you a second. Go ahead and fill out your graphic organizer and get all this. And here we go. Let's go on from here. Um, so let, what's heat? Now, whenever we talk about heat in normal circumstances, we're generally talking about temperature. Oh my God, the heat is so much. Well, it's because it's hot. Uh, or the average particle movement is pretty high. But like many other concepts we've talked about this year, we have a term that says one thing, and then in science, we have a specific definition for it. And the definition of heat is the movement of thermal energy from an object with higher temperature to an object with lower temperature. And it kind of makes sense in the concept of water, that water runs downhill. It goes from a higher elevation to a lower elevation always, and it seeks to equal out in equilibrium. Heat is the same way. Thermal energy always moves from higher to higher thermal energy levels to lower energy levels. And whenever there's thermal energy moving, heat is present. And like I said, thermal energy always wants to exist in an equilibrium or in balance, okay? It needs to be like the force in Star Wars, okay? There's a light side and a dark side, okay? We want, we want the force to be in balance. We don't want it to be out of balance. And heat wants to be in balance. So throughout the entire universe, you have heat, you have thermal energy moving from higher energy states to lower energy states. And whenever we have a system, when the inner thermal energy of all objects is all equal, then there's no heat. And as long as the universe continues to expand and based on what we can gather, uh, you know, like gazillions of years to create a numerical term, there is going to be heat in the universe. And there is a theory called the heat, heat death of the universe, where at, there will be one point where, according to scientists and according to this theory, that all the thermal energy will eventually balance out. 
Uh, and then the universe will be dead. But there's other theories that say that that's completely not true because the universe is accelerating as it expands. And let me just in uh, quantum mechanics and cosmology digest right here. And let's get back to heat. Now, the reason why you have an ice melting and you're like, well, Mr. Klein, that kind of seems the opposite of what I observe. I mean, this ice is heating up. The temperature is going up as it melts. Well, you need to think of it this way. Where is it getting its temperature from? It, it, for it to increase. Where is the thermal energy moving? Well, the thermal energy is not moving from the ice outward. It's not heating up. Rather, it's the opposite. The air around it and the granite surface on uh, that the ice, this ice cube sitting on as it melts is bringing is heat. Thermal energy is moving from the air and from the countertop into the ice. And so as a result, because that thermal energy is moving in, the temperature of the ice then goes up. Okay, so it seems counterintuitive to say that the heat's going into the ice when we watch the ice melt, but whenever we think about it as a system of where the heat's coming from and where is it going and stuff like that, that tends to, it then makes sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add to our graphic organizer to de the term heat and its definition. It's the movement of thermal energy from one object to another. Okay, and we're going to spend the rest of this lesson talking about heat, this movement, uh, and the three ways we do it. And so thermal energy can be transferred in any one of three ways. Now, if you're in sixth grade, if you're in my class watching this video, and in fourth grade, you learned about the three basics of transfer of heat, conduction, convection, and radiation. And having said that, the one we usually think of most is conduction, or the movement of heat through direct contact between objects. Heat conduction is pretty much the basic concept of heat when we think about it. When objects touch, the particles with greater temperature bounce into the particles with less temperature. And as a result, the heat moves, the thermal energy moves from higher to lower. Some objects are better than conducting heat than others, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But let's look at an example of what exactly conduction is. So in this example of friction, because they're moving into each other, as you can see, it glows really hot, and that's the heat. And what happens is the particles are bouncing outward. Okay, they're going from the higher temperature because the thermal energy being created by the particles with the friction, and then it moves outward into the two pieces of metal that have been welded together. Okay, so that's how the heat's transferring. It's being transferred because they're actually touching. Now, we generally classify objects based on how they how they deal with heat through conduction. And there's two basic types. The first type are conductors. Conductors are objects that can transfer heat easily. In other words, thermal energy goes right through them real simple. Metals are generally really good conductors. They're not just good conductors of electricity, they're also really good conductors of heat. And that's because they have spare electrons in their outer valence shells that can just jump out and, and hit another object and therefore transferring uh, the thermal energy. Okay, and whenever we think of that, the opposite would be insulators. Insulators are objects that can't transfer heat easily. Uh, Non-metals are poor conductors. They're really poor conductors. Their valence electron shells are pretty full, so they don't normally have their electrons jump out and bounce into something. Okay, and, and objects that have lots of space, like a fluffy coat or, or gases, are actually really good insulators as well. Uh, because they're able to hold heat in because there's very little opportunity for objects to bounce into each other. So let's look at some examples of conductors and insulators. For example, metal, as you can see right here, it's glowing. It's incandescent. Uh, with heat, it's because the heat was able to quickly move from the fire to the metal, and it was able to, through contact, in order for it to heat up. Whereas on the other hand, insulation in your house keeps your house cool uh, during the summer and warm during the winter because it doesn't allow conduction to take place. Insulation is nice and fluffy, and so there's lots of gaps and there's lots of air on the inside that the heat, heat waves or the electromagnetic radiation, which we'll get to in a second, or rather the warmer particles can't bump into other particles in order for conduction to take place. So that's what conduction is. So we're going to add conduction, heat transfer through touch. Okay, that's the first type of heat transfer. Second one is conduction. When thermal energy is transferred through a fluid, the process is usually called convection. Now, convection is a very specific concept of, of in fluids. Okay, in conve convection, rather, particles continue in a loop from a heat source, okay? And they continually rise and fall. You know that warm air rises, cool air sinks. And that's essentially what a convection current is. It's a series of warming up and cooling down. For instance, you cook soup on a stove, the soup on the bottom warms up because of con 
conduction, okay? So like the heat from the heating element touches the soup, it, it, the particles start bouncing and moving more. They start moving more and more and more, and as a result, because they're warmer, heat rises. They go up to the top. When they get to the top, they release their heat into the air outside, okay? And it starts to cool down. Because it cools down, the particles become close together and more is dense. And because there's more dense, they sink down to the bottom, like I said, and the cycle just keeps on repeating itself. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of con uh, convection right here. One of which is the classic lava lamp, okay? So what happens with a lava lamp is they usually have some sort of oil or something like that. They get, and you have a heating element down at the bottom, okay? The oil gets heated up, it becomes less dense, and then it rises up to the top. When it gets to the top, it cools down and the particles get closer together. And because it gets closer together, it gets more dense and then it sinks down to the bottom. Once it gets down to the bottom, the cycle repeats itself. Okay, so that's convection. It's just a complete and total circle of, of things warming up and cooling down. And we see this at a large level on planet Earth. Uh, we have convection circles of winds and, and temperature. Okay, of course, the warmer air is at the equator and the, the poles, it's much cooler. And so what we generally have is you have this really big cycle of air where the coldest is at the poles, okay, and the warmest is at the equator. Okay, so air warms up at the equator and then it moves away from the equator. As it does, it cools off. And then it keeps on cooling off when it gets to the poles. And as it gets to the poles, it sinks down. And the air that's warming up moves back toward the equator and the cycle takes place. Okay, so these are these convection currents that you see. Also, with planet Earth, uh, we've, we know that there's convection currents in the mantle that moves the plates around. And when you're in eighth grade Earth science, you can learn about that. Or if you're really interested about it right now, go look on my, in my YouTube channel and my playlist talking about plate tectonics, and I talk about these convection currents if you want to learn more. So we have convection, which is the heat transfers through fluids. Okay, we talk about conduction, heat transfers through touch. The final is radiation or thermal energy. Uh, through electromagnetic waves. If you remember in our last couple of chapters, we talked about electromagnetic radiation, the electromagnetic spectrum. We talked about temper oh, we talked about radio waves, infrared, things like that. Well, what it's the same principle that happens. When the electromagnetic wave is created, it carries its energy through both matter and empty space. Okay? Radiation is the only type of heat transfer which can happen through a vacuum. Okay? So you don't need contact or you don't need fluids moving around in order for the heat to be transferred. And what happens when the electromagnetic wave collides with the object, the energy is transformed into thermal energy. Without radiation, the Earth would be a very cold place because essentially 99% of all of the heat on Earth actually comes through the sun through electromagnetic radiation. And the way the Earth keeps it is through the greenhouse effect, which we can look at this in diagram. Solar radiation is absorbed by the Earth, okay? So the electromagnetic waves come. Earth radiates outward infrared radiation. It kind of reflects it off and stuff like that. The atmosphere takes the radiation and reabsorbs it or, and also reflects it back down, creating a cycle that, that keeps the air warm, okay? So the only reason why Earth actually has heat, apart from a minor part due to convection currents due to the the intense heat in the core is essentially from the sun. So without the sun and without the greenhouse effect, we couldn't have be able to maintain heat and, and go through there. So let's go ahead and let's complete our organizer. Okay, radiation is heat transfer in electromagnetic waves. And let's go ahead and let's wrap up this lesson right here. Thermal energy is the total movement of particles in an object. We measure the total movement and that tells us the total amount of thermal energy. When we measure the average amount of thermal energy and the average amount of motion in an object, we get its temperature, okay? Whenever we have thermal energy moving, it always moves from higher levels of energy to lower in order to balance itself out. This movement is what we call heat. And heat transfer can happen in three ways. It can happen through touching, which is conduction, can happen in fluids like liquids and gases through what we call convection, where particles warm up, go move up to the top of a surface, cool down, sink down. And then we have radiation where heat can be transferred through electromagnetic waves and can be transferred through a vacuum. So there you go. That's your lesson on thermal energy. We'll explore this and we'll do a lab on, on this to explore uh, this. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching. <music>